In a comment yesterday on YouTube, somebody indica indicated that the Texas storm has convinced them that I'm right, that climate change is underway, that it's abrupt, that it's having significant impacts on weather systems. It's interesting because I received email messages from other people indicating that the Texas ice and snowstorms are indications of a new ice age or that I'm flat wrong about the idea of global warming. Remember, it's called climate change, even though it's underlain by warming of the planet. So it's global warming that causes some areas to be cold and some areas to be warm, some areas to be wet, some areas to be dry, and so on. In any event, the wavy jet stream is gathering attention now, and so I think it's worth making this video in response. I'm going to quote from my climate change summary, formerly called my climate change summary, an update at GuyMcPherson.com. Specifically, I refer to the section called Tipped Over. A paper in the 9 June 2016 issue of Nature Communications includes data from the 2015 melt season titled Arctic Cutoff High drives the poleward shift of a new Greenland melting record, the abstract reports, quote, we show that the persistence of an exceptional atmospheric ridge centered over the Arctic Ocean was responsible for a poleward shift of runoff, albedo, and surface temperature records over, the, over Greenland during the summer of 2015, end quote. This finding is consistent with Jennifer Francis's long disparaged ideas about the loopy, wavy jet stream. The paper's abstract concludes, quote, the unprecedented 1948 to 2015 and sustained atmospheric conditions promoted enhanced runoff, increased the surface temperatures, and decreased the albedo in northern Greenland while inhibiting melting in the south where new melting records were set over the past decade. Skip ahead a little bit at that climate change update piece to self-reinforcing feedback loop number 19, which reads, loss of Arctic sea ice is reducing the temperature gradient between the poles and the equator, thus causing the jet stream to slow and meander. And then in parentheses, see particularly the work of Jennifer Francis, as well as this article in the 20 November 2014 issue of the Washington Post. And this is what's driving this whole thing, is that the Arctic is warming up faster than the rest of the globe diminishing the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator. Back to climate change summary, feedback loop number 19. The most extreme dipole on record occurred during 2013-2014 as reported in the geophysical research letters. One result is the creation of weather blocks such as the recent very high temperatures in Alaska. This so-called polar vortex became widely reported in the United States in 2013 and received the attention of the academic community when the 2013-2014 drought threatened crop production in California. Extreme weather events are occurring, as reported in the 22 June 2014 issue of Nature Climate Change. Also called Rossby waves, these atmospheric events are on the rise, as reported in the 11-24-2014 edition of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. A paper co-authored by Francis in the 6 January 2015 issue of Environmental Research Letters concludes with this line in the abstract, quote, These results suggest that as the Arctic continues to warm faster than elsewhere in response to rising greenhouse gas concentrations, the frequency of extreme weather events caused by persistent jet stream patterns will increase, end quote. There's more, too, all of it pointing to... Jennifer Francis being exactly correct and being improperly disparaged by other climate scientists as she pointed out the dire nature of the situation that we were finding ourselves in back in 2013-2014.